Hello and welcome to another Rambling Hamiltonian video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new 2023 bike map for Hamilton, Ontario. On the screen right now is the old 2020 map. And if you've been watching my bike ability series, you have definitely heard me complain about this map because it is confusing, it is misleading, it has symbols for things that aren't relevant to cyclists, and it's missing information, and it has lines connecting where they don't actually connect easily. So in the new map, a lot of that has been corrected, but there are some still some misleading features on the new map. And so over the course of the next year, I'm going to be gathering as much information on where there are mistakes or misleading connections, and I need your help. So this is primarily a video to introduce you to this map. You can download the new map from the Hamilton website. I will also include links in the description below for the new map. And I want people to take a look at the areas that they're familiar with and comment on any of my videos what mistakes are in the new map so that we can make corrections, present them to the city, and then hopefully in the next iteration of whatever map comes next, we can have a perfect map. So let's take a look at the brand new map. Ah, visually, it already looks a lot better. Fewer colors is always better when you have a static image. If you can turn layers on and off, if you're have an interactive map online, symbols aren't so bad, colors, you could have the ability to change on a color slider. Those are things you can do when it's interactive, but when it's a static map like this, you need to make it as simple as possible. And here's the thing, all the lines and all the information about the different colors representing different forms of cycling infrastructure, they're all still here. We will have to take a little bit closer look. Uh, right now, you're just looking at this whole map uh, for the urban area. We'll get into how you can kind of tell the difference and like some simple rules on what to look for. But uh, I think the main thing is if you're a casual rider, you're more likely to be cycling on green routes. And if you're a more confident rider, you're more likely to cycle on blue routes, but casual riders will probably like blue routes that are protected. So we'll get into how you can recognize what a protected blue route looks like. So, yeah, one thing I really do like about this map is that not only does it have a legend in the side, which is very easy to read, the old legend was quite small, it was tucked at the bottom, very small print, and they had like tons and tons and tons of symbols and different numbers, what the numbers represented on the map, and it just took up a ton of space, and they had to make everything small. So this new legend, much larger, much more easy to read, and yeah, uh, this is great, but they have a redundancy, and redundancy has kind of been the main theme of my channel this year. I've been talking about it quite a bit, and we need redundancies in communication and redundancy in infrastructure. And so what they have done is a redundancy in communication, and so at the very bottom, we have a different way to show people visual representations for the different bike routes that are the most common. So here in this orange box, we have separated bikeways. And these are probably the safest routes for people. And you'll notice there are blue with white dots and green with white dots. These represent paved routes and the dashes represent unpaved routes. And so when you're looking at the map, you are probably going to be looking for routes that have dots or dashes inside their solid colors. Those are going to be typically the safest route. Now, there are some things that are questionable. A perfect example is directly above us is Garth Street. And I've covered Garth Street recently, this section of green with the white dots. And because it's a two-way track on the side of the road and people fly up and down Garth and are flying off the side streets to join Garth because they have to go fast because the traffic's going fast on Garth, they're not thinking that there's going to be cyclists going northbound on the southbound side because it is a two-way track on one side of the road. And so that can be a little bit dangerous. So there is some things you need to look out for, but uh, yeah, for the most part, you are looking for 
dots and dashes as the safest route. Up next are just the plain old solid line. Blue represents a painted bike lane and green represents basically a bike route. There may be sharrows on it, but overall it's just a bike route. And you might be saying, well, that's not safe. Sharrows aren't safe and they aren't. One thing I will say about sharrows is that they should never be on the side of the road like they are featured in this image. And that is because that gives you a false sense of security. It makes you think, oh, this is my space. But in reality, sharrows mean you need to share the whole road. And so they should always be in the center of the road. But then also, they should just be wayfinding arrows. They shouldn't be sharrows. It, they'll act as sharrows, but they will be meant for wayfinding. And so you might be like, as a way of communication, follow the sharrows. Make them more frequent. And whenever there's a turn, then you'll have an arrow. And so I would say to the city of Hamilton, make this map not lie by trying to turn any road that is green on this map into a bicycle boulevard. It may not have like all the features of a bicycle boulevard, but at least wayfinding sharrows and try to fit in some other things when you can. But again, never put the sharrows off to the side of the road. That just gives people a false sense of security. And then drivers will be like, well, you're supposed to be on the curb when really you could take up the whole lane. And um, yeah. That's my little rant on, on that. And then finally, at the very bottom, we have dashed blue and dashed gray. So dashed blue is a paved shoulder. And there's definitely a few sections here where I don't agree with the paved shoulder or that maybe a paved shoulder should be included. And with the gray dashes, these are what I call tertiary routes. They're calling them cautionary. And I don't agree with the naming of cautionary because cautionary makes you think, oh, I should avoid. A perfect example of you not avoiding is First Road and Terryberry. Actually, it's not Terryberry because north of Rymel Road, I think it's White Deer. And we have gray dashes there. And so you might be like, oh, that's cautionary. Maybe I should take Upper Centennial. No, don't. That's, that's practically a highway. <laughs> so it should be a tertiary or an unsigned bike route. And then another little example of a little mistake, which is fine. It's fine to have mistakes, but we're missing that there is a path connection from First Road to White Deer. And so if you see any corrections that need to be made on the map, please comment down below in any of my videos. I will be building up a document where we can present it to the city and either they fix the map or they make the map not lie. So I think a really good example of making the map not lie is over here in Mount View neighborhood. So let's just take a closer look at Scenic Drive. There's a little path connecting to Sunflower Crescent, which brings you into Scenic Woods. This just looks like a simple connection, but it's not. Let's switch on over to Google Maps and you will see that this path does not connect to the road. So either we need to make that path not show up on the map, or here's my challenge to the city, look for these inaccuracies, these misleading connections, and make them actually connect. Now, you might say, oh, well, it's just grass. Just go over the grass and connect to the sidewalk. There is a bit of a ditch. And so if you hit it at the wrong angle, you're going flying head over heels. And like, this is almost feels like a rural road and cars can fly up and down it. It's not a lot of space for people. Let's just fix that. Let's make an actual connection there. I've talked about putting a trail, a multi-use trail through this hydro corridor many times, but going back to the green line on scenic connecting to this path. Let's either fix the map or pave that so that the map isn't lying. Those are kind of like the two things that I'm hoping to do with all the data that we collect. So yeah. Another thing to note is that there is actually from Tivoli, there's like this single track trail and I've used it plenty of times. And it connects to this parking lot, and then you can connect to Scenic. 
and let's just go on back to the map and you'll see that path isn't there but that path is easier to connect to scenic than the one to sunflower crescent is and yet it's not featured there so that's another thing and i just want to build up a catalog that we can present to the city i need your help because i can't know every single part of the city i i do know it quite well i do study maps a lot <laughs> but i need your help so please just any of my videos comment where you think there's inaccuracies there's going to be a download for this map connected to the city website down below. Download the map, take a look at the map. I also have made this into a PNG file, which I will, I will try to find a way to share that with people because the PDF file can be hard to move around in. And so usually if you have an image file, you can, you know, zoom in easily. You can drag it around quite easily. Uh, so if that's something that works for you, I'm definitely trying to work on a way to share that with people. But uh, yeah, I do really like this map. I just want to make it perfect. And so let's all work together. Either the city doesn't have the funding to check for inaccuracies, or I don't know what happened, but there's definitely mistakes. An another perfect example of a mistake, which is a little bit more obvious, but the Lincoln M. Alexander Parkway eastbound. It's also westbound, so I don't know why they put eastbound. And then a little bit further along, we got Lincoln M. Alexander Parkway westbound. And it's just like, oh, it's also eastbound. And then as you go and you connect to the Red Hill, Red Hill Valley Parkway southbound. Well, it's also northbound. And then Red Hill Valley Parkway northbound. It's also southbound. So if you notice inaccuracies like that, like, Maybe a street name is spelt incorrectly. Let me know. I want to know everything you can possibly find so we can make a better map. Uh, some of the things that I will be doing in future videos, I'll be going over and trying to fix the design of the map slightly. I don't want to hurt the feelings of whoever designed this map. They did an amazing job, but there, there's some things that kind of get to me. So this blue line here, this little wavy blue line, that's sanatorium. And you'll notice that the green from Bendemir is flooding into it. That's not the case. The trail ends right at the road. And so unless it is a raised crosswalk, it shouldn't be green. So that should be blue. We'll be fixing that in a video. At Redfern, the intersection is blue, the entire intersection, but the bike lanes uh, start and end both south of Redfern, so that intersection should be green. And then also, I'm, I'm not really a fan of having these rounded edges. They should be straight, but uh, that's just more of a personal choice. But yeah, in future videos, I think once a month, I will be focusing on a couple of neighborhoods. I'll probably focus on Mount View first because I'm quite familiar with it and I've already mentioned a few things. We'll fix a few th things up and uh, we'll see if you agree. Another perfect example of things that I'm looking for, this dashed green path, which in my mind, dashed green represents trails that you should dismount. And I definitely agree you should dismount for this trail, but there's a set of stairs there and people need to know if there is actually a barrier. And so having the symbol for stairs is really important to have there so that people know if I can't carry my bike downstairs, I know it's only so many steps, but at least people will know, like, if I can't carry my bike, then maybe avoid taking that route. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video. As I said, download the PDF. I think there's physical copies of the map circulating around the city. If anyone from the city wants to give me a bunch of them and I can distribute them to people uh, whenever I meet up, I do have pannier packs on the back of my bike at all times that I can stuff them full of maps and then hand them out to people as people request them. So yeah, if you want to do that, uh, let me know and then I will meet up with you somehow and get some maps and then I can give them out to people. But uh, yeah, I guess one final thing before we end the video. I love that they've added intersection infrastructure and how to use it. 
In the previous map, they showed you how to mount your bike to a bus at the front of the bus. That's something that should be on the bus map, not the bike map. I think it's a little bit more important that people know how to use these bike boxes, the left turn box and the cross ride. So yeah, glad that they have that. I think they have a little bit more information on the back side. I do have to start working on stitching together that rural map, but uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Hopefully you found it informative. And as I said, you find any mistakes or anything that you dislike about the map, let me know. And then I will put together some sort of catalog that we can present to the city in hopefully a year's time. Uh, it will take some time for the city to make any changes, but yeah, just start sending me anything that you notice. And uh, oh, I guess a uh, perfect example of another thing is uh, Eastport Drive being a paved shoulder. It's not. It's not. It's very briefly a paved shoulder. And then you're on an 80 kilometer an hour road where people travel 120 because there's absolutely nothing on that road because it's a bit, a bit of a bypass for Beach Boulevard. So yeah, that's, that's something that needs to be completely removed. Don't put that paved shoulder there. It ends like here at like Turk Road or Wark Avenue. Yeah. Anything you see, just let me know. If you can take a picture, send me a picture. But otherwise, you can just tell me where it's at. And yeah. Until next time, take care and stay safe.